There's a lot of uniques in Diablo 2, so with this video the goal is to give you a hand in understanding your unique glove options in the game, since while often underappreciated, there are a lot of really fun options to be had in these fairly varied uniques. As usual, we'll start off in the normal gloves with the Hand of Brock, an interesting source of low-level dual leech, which early on you'll be lucky if you can kind of maintain zeal with it, but as you get more damaging gear it can actually be fairly decent for sustaining your low mana skills. Only reason this does not really see a lot of late game use is that while it is an okay pair of gloves, it lacks any of the desired GG stats for the end game, but for just going through it's not a bad option to keep around if you happen to find it. Next is Blood Fist, an often underestimated pair of gloves that gets a bit of of a reputation in some communities thanks to its level 9 requirement, alongside some fairly nice stats. The highlights being the increased attack speed and faster hit recovery, but the minimum damage boost and extra life are not half bad either. While I only use it on a few builds, the usefulness of the kind of frame savings from this pair of gloves cannot be denied. After that we have magic fine gloves, chance guards. These are usually about as sought after as gold daggers, though a bit less than gold wrap, as far as basically low level magic items go. And it can also be used in some end game farming situations. There really isn't much use though outside of farming for chance guards unfortunately, but they can get up to some fairly solid amounts of magic find and gold find on them, making them a fairly decent choice for equipping if you're going through the game and want to find some solid incidental drops. Next we have one of the more popular gloves used by casters, and that's Mage Fist. Being one of only two sources of faster cast on gloves, Mage Fist also pack a nice boost of plus to fire skills and mana regeneration boost to keep things topped off. While most of the rest of its stats are rather underwhelming, these base stats are more than enough to cement this set of gloves as one of the cornerstone pieces of equipment for several endgame builds. The last of the normal uniques is a pair of gloves that have been highly sought after at times, but fallen off a bit with time, especially thanks to the introduction of merchants selling mana potions and that is Frostburn. With massive increased mana, a pinch of off weapon enhanced damage, a pinch of cold damage too, they're fairly decent gloves, especially if you nab them on a solo cell found run. And while I rarely use them anymore in end game builds, they do have quite a few like fun uses even in the modern game if you step off the trail of the meta into the more interesting mid game kind of builds. Moving into exceptional gloves, we have Venom Grip, which are basically the poor man's blood gloves with crushing blow, life leech, and actually reasonable defense for gloves. They also have a bit of a poison theme with poison damage and resistance perks to help them out. The sad reality though is that since blood gloves exist, you can make items that easily beat these out with a similar stats combined with increased attack speed because you can get those on crafted gloves, all for the cost of some perfect gems and easily farmable runes. Are these bad? No, but they are easily outclassed with a little bit of work. Next is a pair of gloves that I almost never use, and that is Grave Palm. They are at the point that despite having a few stored, the only ones I kind of bothered to even identify were for this video. To put it nicely, these are your Undead Slayer gloves with a boost to damage and attack rating to undead and a handful of stats. They just don't cut the mustard whenever it comes to regular use though since there are gloves that do everything these gloves do, but better. For example, our next gloves, the Ghoul Hides, do undead killing with per level boosts that quickly outclass Grave Palm's basic values at higher levels at the very least, and combine them with mana leech and bonus life, so it has utility beyond simply undead slaying. Are these much better? No, but I have actually used these on a few occasions on solo cell found runs, where generally speaking I have yet to find a real use for grave palms outside of, well, being just gloves to wear. They're not really an upgrade from even a mediocre set of rares for normal play. After that though, we have a pair of gloves that I love using, much to the pain of a number of viewers, and that is Lava Gout with 20% increased attack speed, a pinch of fire damage, fire resist, and a chance to auto cast enchant. These are some of my favorite gloves for physical attackers in the game, mainly because I favor full sweeps with characters like that, where I hit all the farming areas in a row without leaving the game, and this keeps me from having to use demon limbs and such for the attack rating boost of enchant and having to recast it all the time. There are better gloves for quick runs, but these these are just fun and consistent for me and they kind of accentuate my playstyle. Next is a bit more of a gimmicky but still fire themed pair of gloves called Hellmouth. These unique war gauntlets can be used for a little bit of fun with chance to cast builds to play around with them, though with their percents so low it's not super reliable especially for the levels of the skills it causes to spawn. Beyond that these are just decent defense gloves with fire damage and absorb, so nothing too special to write home about, but they can be fun here and there even if they are not super valuable. As we move into the elite gloves we actually have a situation where all three of 
of the elite items have their specific uses, starting with Dracul's Grasp, easily the most popular of the three thanks to its chance to cast Life Tap on Striking that has been used by a number of builds as a method of getting high amounts of life recovery from their hits, even against undead targets. Beyond this, you also have Life Per Kill, an extremely rare modifier, as well as Plus Strength, Natural Life Leech, and Open Wounds, which puts these in the upper list of gloves for martial characters even if they don't have increased attack speed. These are really also highly sought after for smiter builds because it allows you to get life back from smiting as well. After that, we have the slightly underappreciated Soul Drainers. While for the most part, these are just the big brothers of the Hands of Brock we looked at earlier with Dual Leech, they actually also have a chance to cast Weaken, which can help out against certain annoying enemies or even help partially mitigate the damage boosts of some enemy auras. While not a best in slot option, these can be useful to characters traveling through some of the more dangerous areas with a lot of melee or physical damage enemies. Last on the list are the Steel Rand War Gauntlets, which are fairly offensively designed gauntlets that I passed over a lot after finding them the first time thanks to the high strength requirement. But these gauntlets oddly do have a number of interesting uses thanks to the 10% crushing blow, big strength boost, and a fairly decent off-weapon enhanced damage boost ranging from 30 to 60%, which while not fortitude levels is not a small amount either, which makes these kind of a fairly reasonable tool for high damage loadouts that don't need increased attack speed. And that's the unique gloves. Much like the unique belt there's a lot of competition between these and their set item counterparts as well as rares in terms of what's best in slot, but it's best not to dismiss the uniques in this slot since there's a ton of good options for almost every type of build that you can only get from these unique items. And a special thanks to all the channel members and patrons that make this content possible.